Good morning. To introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Adele Cutler, professor of mathematics uh, at the uh, uh, Utah State University, where she's been since 1988. Adele's been here. Adele is the co-author of Random Forest, along with uh, Leo Bryman. Uh, and today she's going to be presenting on Random Forest. Thank you. Adele. Thank you. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm the co-author. I, I, I worked with Leo after he authored Random Forest, but we worked together for a long time on it and uh, had, a, had a great time. Um, first of all, I want to thank Southwood Systems for uh, inviting me and for uh, the conference. I want to acknowledge Mary Lou Bryman, who's in the front of the room here. Uh, it's nice to see Mary Lou. And, uh, I know she was very supportive to Leo, so she should take some pride in Leo's work. <laughs> and um, uh, this, uh, my, my talk is really applied. Uh, I had the misfortune of getting an NIH grant with a colleague in nutrition, and so I've had to work on applications for the last few years, which has sort of taken me out of the development arena a bit. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's interesting and worthwhile, uh, worthwhile applications, so uh, I hope you'll, you'll find it interesting. I'm going to talk about two different uh, things. Um, I'm going to talk about random forests and archetypal analysis, uh, both of which uh, I worked on with Leah. Uh, archetypal analysis was part of my PhD, and then random forest, of course, came later. Uh, so, no talk on forests is, is complete without a, a picture of Leo and about uh, without an acknowledgement of, uh, of him. Uh, archetypal analysis is not so well known. Uh, it was done in between his work on cart and his work on bagging. Um, in fact, we finished it in 88, but the paper didn't come out until 94. Um, and, and so uh, that's the sort of timeline there uh, of, of the, the two bits of work compared to uh, the, the other things that you know about cart and, and bagging. Um, Oh, I'm not a bit nervous. <laughs> All right, so uh, the first, I'm going to look at two different examples. It's not in the abstract. In the abstract, I said I was just going to look at one different thing, one example, but I'm actually going to look at two. This first one is about some cookbooks, and you may have seen in the news recently that um, some of the celebrity chefs have been criticized for their own lifestyle and for the fact that maybe they're not uh, advocating a healthy, a healthy uh, eating pattern for people. So, uh, uh, what one of my colleagues did, Cheryl Aguilar, Aguilar um, did uh, a huge amount of work looking at 12 different cookbooks. One of these cookbooks was the American Heart Association cookbook, and the other 11 were from celebrity chefs, but I'm not allowed to tell you who, um, <laughs> because it's going to be fairly controversial when this hits the, the press. And so, for right now, you, uh, I'm not allowed to tell you who, but if you see it on CNN at some point, you'll know that you found out about it first from me <laughs> at uh, Salford's conference. Uh, so, uh, what they did was they looked at uh, 300 different um, recipes. These were, uh, I'm looking at 300 different recipes for main courses from these 12 cookbooks. Uh, they also, they looked at lots of other things other than main courses, but just for the main course, uh, that's um, what I'm going to look at today. And uh, Cheryl collected a lot of nutritional information about how much fat, how much saturated fat, and so on. You can imagine how tedious that was to go through all those recipes um, and uh, figure out uh, how, what the nutritional content was. And she tried to standardize the serving sizes as much as possible, although uh, some of the recipes just had, uh, it, it was, it's, um, if they said it was for six, serving. She just took six servings and went like that. So pretty much uh, what you get in these recipes is if you made it and served it to that many people, that's how you know the nutritional content is, is what you get. Uh, so the, the purpose here was to see how these uh, other 12, uh, how these, these 12 cookbooks compared, uh, how the other 11 in particular compared to the American Heart Association. That's the one I am allowed to tell you about is the American Heart Association. So one of the things we can look at here is, can we predict who wrote the cookbook just by looking at the recipe? And that sounds absurd, I know it does. And you'll see, it, it is fairly absurd, but um, uh, it's, uh, those are other things that we're going to see. Later. 
Uh, the second study is a study on uh, aging. This is the one that uh, I've been working on extensively for the past few years. Uh, it's, it's called the Cache County Memory Study, and uh, I live in Cache County. Utah State uh, is, a, is in a little valley uh, about 80 miles north of Salt Lake. I'll show you where it is. So here's Utah. Uh, let me see if I can get this laser to work. This is, this is high population <laughs> for Utah. Uh, this is Salt Lake. Uh, this is uh, Provo, where BYU University is. Salt Lake has the U of U. And we're up in here, <laughs> in a little valley up here. That's where Cache Valley is. Not very uh, not many uh, people up there, but um, it's kind of pretty. Uh, that's what the valley looks like. Uh, probably right now we have snow on the mountains still. And um, there you can see the uh, local uh, religion has its, uh, I can't remember if it's its temple or its tabernacle, but uh, it's got good representation in Cache Valley. 